Aha, akhun ke kadan my precious relatives uh you ke you ke wish kana khutu da zoom tunakh uh it is good to see all of you uh, all of us were gathered we're gathering through zoom today to kunakh sahati kaudia you ke wherever you may have come from and it's good that you are here uh yeah yeah ye kha ak tok siku da da yuk ak da tan chie gu geng uh and at this moment I, at first i would like to you know just speak again in our own language um just for a few moments uh on some things that i would like to talk about kun kun yugi saya adayu tokhta tan ayat at a de hati en ya su ha ha sil ko ha sa de yus khalat ki ya ak ka kaswa yu ka khwa jil su khlil ko ha si ka khwa jil sa de yus khalat ki ya one exoer to a two a two a two a two a two a two a a two a two a two a two a a two a a two a a a Chuchainach Achaya ye deshtoka hati til to cut you one. Um, sometimes, you know, I, I think about our language, our, our ancestors, when I think about uh, my uncles, my grandparents, the way they would talk, you know, I gather those things that I think about, I think about those teachings they would give us or give me as I was growing up, things that I would hear at parties, I think about it. And sometimes you know, it makes us like the elders say, it makes you have a heavy heart uh, you, to see how, how much we're, we've lost. But then again, I look at amongst, I look amongst all of you and you folks give me strength and you, you lift me up by your wanting and the knowledge that you want to, you know, the, the, the yearning to, to wanting to speak our own language. It makes me feel good. It makes me, uh, gives me strength, you know, to keep on, keep on moving. So that's why I'm, I'm so thankful for all of you that uh, are always wanting to learn. And that's how I'm feeling this morning, uh, how I'm feeling today. Kun Kunyaki Saya, Shuhik de Hanaku good Tastia Achaya Achtuka with the heat. This past few days I've been thinking of Ethel, and you know, that's why it makes me feel you know, heavy hearted sometimes. Because you know the, she is another speaker that has gone. I've watched all the the speakers in cake except for one or two, you know, that are just left in cake now. When I was growing up in cake, there was close. There had to have been thirty or forty speakers, and that's all the elders would speak to me. And once they found out that I understood or spoke Shingit, so when the elders say some of these things, you know, it really hits home. But then I remember, you know, more of some more of the sayings that they would say, and that makes me feel good because of all of you. You all make me feel good wanting to learn more, and I hope that um, it's helpful what I'm teaching or how I'm trying to teach, because uh, it's all, you know, it's, it's the same way that I grew up here, and I just had to hear it, always hear it, always listen to it, even if I didn't understand. I wouldn't stop stop the speaker's train of thoughts. Maybe you know some of this will help you. 
what I would do is I would, uh, if I didn't understand a word, I'd write it down to, best, to the best of my ability. Sometimes, you know, we don't hear things correctly, but, you know, if I, I wrote it down and then I eventually later, I'd go and ask somebody, I says, what does this mean? Wasi yata, you know, ask them and they'd explain it. So that's how I, you know, I would expand my vocabulary is um, focusing on those things. You know, when you know something, you know, try not to think about that word too much. You already know it. Move on to a new word. Try to find, figure out a new word. And that's what uh, what I would do with the old timers, especially when my grandmother and Cake was alive. She, I would ask. She would say some things. And then I'd go ask somebody from Huna how they would say it because I knew it was, sometimes it was different. And then from there I'd have sometimes four different ways of saying one one phrase or one word. Or vice versa. Um, if I heard something up here that was different, I would go ask the speakers and cake, you know, what does this mean? And sometimes words don't translate over in, in that regions. Sometimes they don't have it or they don't use it. So, and that's okay. You know, we all have different uh, translations for things or different words for things. But that's how um, I was able to you know, speak, speak with a cake accent, so to speak. Um, but again, yes, Gunfchish to cut you on. Uh, makes me feel good to always be amongst you folks. Um, a few times, a few classes ago, I talked about the importance of names. And I came across one that was kind of touched a little bit about that. And it was of um, Albert Davis from Sitka speaking. He talked, he was talking a little bit about uh, when Robert Zuboff had passed and I won't get too much into it because I'll share the link with you folks so you can hear him explain it and sling it. Again, um, I really try to use the elders uh, voices as much as I can. So, you know, it's not, uh, and then just me explain it so that you're hearing it from them as just the same way I did. Uh, so that's that's my hope and understanding you know, of, of or of my reasoning behind using these uh, recordings or tapes is uh, is so that you hear it from them just like I did. And there was um, A. P. Johnson from Sitka as well. There was a recording, and this is how how we viewed it. He said. Um, Right after they heard a recording, the way he explained it, he said, we have just heard it uh, from their very mouth. And it was a person that had gone on, but it was their voice recording. And he said that because this was our worldview is that it, it was still as if we we're seeing, we heard it from their very mouth is the way he said it. And so that's why I also use these recordings. So you, you're hearing it from their mouth. You're hearing uh, it straight from them. And just like I, like I said, like I grew up with how I, how I learned and got a, got a grasp of our language. It was just constantly hearing it, constant, constant, constant. Even if, like I said, if I didn't understand something, I'd wait and ask later. So that's why I encourage you folks uh, from the first classes, if you have any questions and I, if I can answer it uh, right away, I'll, I'll try, but ask us questions. So then, uh, get a better understanding. But here's um, Albert Davis. Uh, 
Albert Albert Davis Albert Davis mentioned in no uncertain terms he his gratitude and happiness for being here. He gave you who are out there very high tributes of honor and salutation. And if there was more to be given, he would indeed have done so. He says, uh, he spoke about how Robert Zuboff used to come to Sitka, come to his door unannounced, knock on the door and says, would say to him, I've come to stay with you. And it is always no surprise for Robert, but a surprise for Albert Davis. And he stayed with him. And eventually, Shadag, Robert, uh, Robert uh, Zuboff departed from this life and he was greatly missed. He did much for the people of Angoon. He, he shared the culture, Singit culture, generously. He was the great storyteller along the street. On sunny days, children would surround him and his home was, always had an open door. And by the way, I used to come to his door unannounced too and live with him during my church trips. Well, since they missed him in Angoon, someone had to carry the name. And so Albert Davis was given the name that it might become a part of the living world too. And so it was announced this evening that Albert Davis has the name of South So that, um, you know, just how much you know, our people think of names is what um, part of that, that um, video is that our people 
when they would miss somebody so much, you know, they have a really missed them, they would give the name to somebody. And so in this case, they missed Robert Zuboff so much that they gave the name to Albert Davis, Shah Dog, when they told him, um, it, it, that's you now, is basically it. What eh, aya, what eh, aya, that is you now, as well, when they gave him the name. And so in our culture, you know, he came back because of that. And the people would treat him just as they would um, Robert Zuboff. So like I said, that story I shared you know, a few weeks back when the, the fisherman went up towards Yakutat and he told them who his name was. He, when that fisherman knocked on that man's door and the man answered and said who his name was, he got emotional and said, my grandfather has come to visit me. That's how, pe how serious our people take these names. That's how serious names are. And if, um, if some, that's something we, we can take away from today, you know, that I believe that's it. Um, we treat people as, as, the, as such. I remember when uh, my grandma, when I'd go visit my grandma as a little kid, I was given her husband's name, Keet Yanayi. And when I'd visit her, she'd call me her little husband. You know, and so just a term of endearment because, uh, because I had that name. And that's just the, our, the way we are as people. Um, another one I have is one of my grandmas when she would go into school in Sitka. And one of the teachers there was a uh, Fingit man and he'd always address her as grandma. He'd say, Thik. and she didn't know how come she did. She, he would do that, the teacher would do that. And he finally told her, he, or she finally asked and he told her, he said, it's because you share the same name as my grandma. And so that's why I call you grandma too, because it's the respect we have for each other. That's how we view it. How much we respect each other and our, our, our names. And if, um, you know, I don't see it that as much or that as prevalent anymore. And there's something I don't want us to lose you know, that respect for each other with our names. Uh, I, some names are so old, you know, we don't know the names, translations for them unless they've been recorded or stories have been passed down. But, you know, we still have these names and if we could uh, try to exercise, you know, try to exercise some of these things again we'll see you know, a lot of respect come back with our people. And I, I truly believe that uh, you know, it all starts with the names from the kids. And in Clinket, when the kids would call out, the kids would be brought out, um, called it yet the tea, yet the tea. When children were brought out after they were born, uh, this is what they called it. Uh, and they were, it was so the people would know who the child was, as this is what it was called, yet the T. I'll write it out. So we all, uh, maybe some of us don't, but um, the word for you know face is ya, yeah. ya, yeah. right here. Your face, ya. Yeah. So that's what it's referring to when they would put the names. You know, sometimes you see it at parties where they put a dollar bill or something of value on their forehead. You know, they're putting the name on you, and so that's what it is referring to. Yet the t, putting the name, or I guess like putting a name to the face. You know that expression. Kind of like that. Yet the T. And the uh, names were often given by grandmothers. The grandmothers knew who, who, who was coming back. And sometimes uh, you know, that's not the case anymore. But uh, when the children were born, that the grandmothers gave the names. Even some from the father's side. Let's give an example of my younger brother Elijah, my youngest brother. 
he was just a baby when he was born and they brought him to gold medal. My mom and dad brought him to gold medal. And uh, there was uh, some ladies that were sitting down, the elders, some elders from Huna and one from Sitka. And they brought him, my mom brought him over to meet them, meet the elders. And as soon as the elder, one of the elderly ladies looked at him, she gasped, she went, Yan <gasps> Lchin. And the other ladies looked at uh, looked at my brother as well, and they said, "Ah, oh. you know, they just shook an agreement, and that was it." From that day forward, my brother was given the name Yan Lchin, and so that's how he got his name. So sometimes, uh, like I said, the elders, you know, they really know. They, you know, our people were so connected to each other that they knew exactly who was coming back when they held them or seen them and they would give them that name so elijah's name was was um the name of uh, uh some of you are from huna uh, there or have ties to huna uh, his name was ben watson ben watson's slingit name was yanis jean but he was from the kwakwan area if i remember right but he married a woman from huna and so that's uh how uh, that's where my brother's name comes from, Yan Lchin. And I have another brother who has that name as well. Um, but <clears throat> so that's a little bit about um, expanding upon expanding um, on names and how they are so important, and why the, our people regard them so highly. Uh, any questions about names? I have a question. I don't know. Maybe it's more like a comment. Um, we don't have any Clinket speakers down in this area anymore. Um, how, do you know if there's any talk in, I guess, Clinket country about how to start getting names or giving names? I mean, if you don't know, you don't know. So mm -hmm. I've done enough. I've done a lot of research. I mean, I've accumulated 221 family trees that have wow. a lot of clinket names, mm -hmm. but they're already, I mean, they're already dispersed. I guess uh, there's just nobody giving clinket names anymore. So do you know if there's anybody available to make up new names or a suggestion on, mm -hmm. on how to make new names? You're in catch again? Okay. Um, the only speaker that I know of, he lives in Saxman, Joe Thomas. My uncle Joe, yes. Yeah. Who's yeah. from Cake. Yeah, you have ties to Cake. Then Joe's, Joe's a good speaker. Um, I think that's been the dilemma, too, is, is that mm -hmm. as we're trying to do, you know, we do culture camps, we do, you know, functions with the, um, just with the youth and the community, and then we're asking them, you know, can you please tell us who you are, mm -hmm. your names, and it's just a, a big, there's a big, big gray area. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's know. maybe it's a bigger conversation that maybe mm -hmm. people need to start having that maybe there's a, I don't know, a collective where we're, we're all just going to, this is what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. And just to start, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the way, I, the way I know names, you know, names uh, commemorate um, events in history. <laughs> They commemorate, you know, just anything that happened that was significant and the people didn't want to get. And then they would give those names uh, to whoever um, so that they wouldn't forget. Like uh, my great grandmother's name, Kutshu uh, Eskik, which means uh, the history was lost. And um, from what I remember hearing, it was um, there was a war between. Kwakwan and I can't remember which which village off the top of my head, 
but the war went on for a while and then they forgot why they were fighting. And so that the name came from that, Put Shu was key. And then again, it was shortened to just Shu was key. And so both stem from that, but that's uh, some of the things of how names can come about. If you want to remember something, you know, the, there's always, uh, it's always a long word, shortened and condensed to something smaller. I'll give another example, my, one of my other names is Dauk Tank. And that was shortened from Dat Koch to the Tanch. That's a long word, long word for us for a name, but our people shortened it to Dauk Tank, which is referring to, um, how a bear's character, dubious of a bear's character, you know, that's what it translates to. So if you see even like the things that within your clan, you see um, your clan crest is sometimes, uh, let's see, like I know one of the killer whale names, Gush Dehin, it's referring to the, you ever watch a killer whale when it's swimming and the, it leaves um, kind of the wake behind its dorsal fin. That's what that translates to, gush dehin, the water, referring to the water behind that dorsal fin. So if you see an, an animal to, uh, acting a certain way and you want to remember that, sometimes those were names too. Like uh, Frank Johnson from uh, Cake as well, his his clinking name is Taukwati, winter eggs. Refers to the ravens when they lay their eggs in the winter. And so, you know, it's, Things like that, if you see something and you want to remember it, you know, it's, it can become a name. Um, you know, our people had nicknames as well. You know, some people, they would, I guess, give them uh, pet names because they loved or respected that person so much they would give them a, a nickname. But, um, I don't think, you know, everyone now says you've got to wait for a party and that's what we think. But, you know, if we were to do that, you know, if, um, you know, a lot of us wouldn't have a name for a couple of years. You know, how would we address each other? You know, just like uh, when kids are born now, you know, they're born with names and the same thing. So we don't always have to wait for a party, especially if you're born into it. Your, your thing get, you know, it's, it's letting the people know, you know, this is who this is. This is who this person's gonna be. And I'm not sh sure, have you looked at the um, UAF archives with um, Frank and Emma Williams? Yeah, we have them all. Mm -hmm. I've, yeah, um, I think the only other, thing that we do have a, a huge inventory of is um, place names. Mm -hmm. um, Ketchikan, thanks to um, Esther Shea, mm -hmm. Emma Williams, and Mary Jones did a huge, huge um, partnership with the Forest Service. Mm -hmm. And there's over 1,200 place names recorded. Um, in Clinkett and it's actually, they were great with clan territory too. So they have, so we do have territory broken down. That was the other thing is, is that maybe, I know it's not likely or it's not normal to name people after place names, but there's, mm -hmm. there's no other names that we can, can give. And we do know the stories of those areas. So, mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I know there's a lot of history down that way because you know that's kind of where a lot of our people started. We started off in the Nass River area too. You know, it wasn't mm -hmm. just land, but uh, um, I remember Clarence Jackson saying that our people owned land in Portland Canal too, you know, right across mm -hmm. the Nass River area. So we had land down there, but it was just as colonization happened, you know, we just you know, slowly moved towards respected areas where they kind of draw the line now. Um, but um, might have to ask my dad. 
and I'll be down. I'll be down that way in the middle of next month too, um, the 17th through the 20th. Um, be heading down there for a wedding, but if you want to maybe get together and talk a little bit more about that, just let me know. Yes. Um, yes, please. Dao Tang, this is Diasutsu. Are uh, Shlinget names um, considered at U? Um, are they owned by the clan mm -hmm. or the house? Um, is the name just put on a person? I hear a lot of people say my name. And I was just wondering how those names, because I understood you have to go back to the family where you come from, your mother and her mother and her mother to receive a, a Shlinget name. Yeah, names do go with houses. You know, that's how my what my auntie Nora explained to an eighty a celebration eighty eight, if I remember correctly. Um, she was talking about the names my grandmother's side. So there's some of my cousins on my dad's side have names from Yakutak, and she was naming them off first. Then she said they're from Yakutak. He's got a Yakutak name, and then she went on to talk about. My dad, my uncle Leo, and a few others that had names from Raven House in Haines. And she said they're from Haines, their names from Raven House. That's why they're from Haines. And she explained that. But some, some clans also share names. Um, and that just um, goes to show how, how at one point our people were one. Our people were one people at one point. The, all the Raven clans were ra all one clan at one point, and the Eagles uh, also. Like um, my grandmother's brother, um, his clinket name was um, Anahik, and it refers to a bird, a small bird. They make a noise just before. Um, making their song, you know, songbirds, you know, when you hear them in the morning, uh, before they start to sing, they'll make, a, they'll make a noise. And so that's what that name refers to. So that's shared with my clan and also Tsagwe D, um, Shungu KD and Tefkwe D share names as well, like Kuchain. My great grandfather on my dad's side's singit name was Kuchain and he was Shungu KD. But I know Tehkwe D also share that name, and so do we. Um, there was a Kaguantan man from Box House that had that name. But you know, these are all three different clans: Shungu K D, um, Tehkwe D, and Kaguantan all shared this one name that I know of so far. And I'm sure if we shared it, you know, others shared it as well. So sometimes. Um, a lot of times clans share names and the, the, like I said, just goes to show that our people were one uh, at one point. Our people were one clan, one people. And then as we were migrating back towards um, or when we were migrating or settling in new different areas, we uh, different events happened and we wanted to remember these things. So we made new names. So if you want to Irene, if you want to katlachta, if you want to remember something that has happened within your clan, or just any in the any point, right at any moment in time, you know, write it down, and the, we can try. We can try the best way we can to describe it in Shlinget. Um, so I know Kiksadi have this name on Wukik. And it means the earth shook when they were born. So when one of the women, one of the kids were born, you know, there was an earthquake. And so they wanted to remember that. And that describes that with that event. And it can be stuff like that. My dad's clan and uh, the Koho clan, they both share uh, the name Yesyadi. Yes. Clean, 
And these, these come from the Raven stories. So some names come from the Raven stories as well. And again, just to show that well, all the people were one at one point. So does that kind of answer your question about names um, and you hearing your name? Does that help? I know um, I see uh, Juan Lane on here and um, a few of the um, Rango parties as well, when they had a party, um, Harold was good at um, you know, creating new names for stuff that had happened to commemorate uh, stuff that happened at these parties in Rango. And he helped create some names for that. So that's how, how names can come about. Like when our people first found metal for the first time, and it was, um, I believe it was Chukunedi. They were living on an island. There were, they had a settlement on y Yacobi Island, and they found a board with a nail sticking, up, sticking out of it. And they wanted to remember that, so they called it Achyantan, and that's, that became a name of somebody. And our first that nail sticking out of the board, ah, yantan. And then from there, they shortened it to just yantan. So both, both uh, stem from that one, one event, uh, just shorter versions of the name. So again, yeah. Um, I'll be I'll be down there March 17th, I believe, for a few days. And I'll leave on the 20th. I'll leave you my um, cell number in the chat. Okay, you can just message it direct. Okay. Any other questions? So that's, that's how I understand the names and I've uh, talked to several elders you know, just to make sure, you know, I always, I always talk with the elders, always as much as I can while they're still with us, just to confirm the things I say or what I'm teaching so that, um, you know, I'm, I'm not, because uh, this is a Tlingit um, way of thinking too, is that, you know, if, if I'm teaching you something wrong, then it, it'll come back to me and people will you know, come and talk to me. And, um, and so I'm real conscientious of that and that's how I was raised. And if I don't, under, don't know something or understand it, you know, we don't talk about it until we do. And so that's you know, you know, what, I, what I'll teach is that I'll teach you things that I understand and know because I don't want uh, you know, my students to look bad either. You know, it's important to me. You know, you don't want to set people up for failure and make them look bad. And that's uh, something we were taught is that we never put our, our um, put the people on the defensive side. And that was important to us because like I said, we uh, live so close together that uh, the peace was more important than anything. And so our people have made sure that uh, We were kind and we, we taught each other things right. And if um, a mistake was made, uh, um, the student made a mistake, the teacher paid, paid the price for it. So that's how our people work and those, those laws, those laws that we have. Any questions?
No, I got another class I have to be at uh, shortly, so I got to drive, drive to my next class from home. Thanks, Chish. Good to see you, Gigi. Good to Chish. Nice, Chish. All right, folks, have a good day. Take care of yourselves.